Hi everyone, I'm Francis Pletcher from the React Computer Partnership and welcome to our introduction to Teams at this first ever ISBAR virtual summit. What we're going to do today is have a look at Teams, uh, the uh, flagship product from Microsoft and give you an overview of what it does. For those of you who are already using it, hopefully you will able to pick up some tips that you didn't actually know. So what we're looking at here is the web version of Teams. There is also a desktop version and there's a version for the tablets and there's a version for the phone. So wherever you are, you can use Teams so you can stay in touch and collaborate all the time. With the desktop version and the web version, you can see down here that we have icons uh, and this is where we get told a lot of what's going on. So activity will tell us uh, any, any messages that we've received since we last logged on and you'll have a number there to say how many it is. And it's a very good way of keeping up to date very quickly with what's been going on. Um, the chat function is where you have one-to-one, -one, probably unstructured conversations. Um, and that can be anything as simple as, hi, good morning, how are you? Did you see that on TV last night? Have you seen so-and-so because they, uh, they don't seem to have been around today? Um, the Teams is where we're going to focus on, and that's where you probably have a lot of your conversations. Calendar allows you to um, set up Teams meetings, which can be either audio meetings or video meetings. Um, it's integrated with Outlook, so you can create a Teams meeting from Outlook as well as from doing it within Teams itself. And if you put a meeting in Teams, it will put it in Outlook for you. Calls allows you to have either video calls, you can either do a message, you can do an email, you can do a video call or an audio call from here and set it up so you kind of use it as your phone book. Um, files we will look at a bit more later, but this is where it stores all the files that you use within Teams, because as well as sharing conversations, you can also share files. Flow is workflow. We're going to have a look at a workflow a bit later on, but that will be a workflow from outside of Teams because Office 365 is an integrated product. So it lets us affect things within Teams when we're not actually working in it. Um, one thing that's worth looking at in the ellipses is the shifts icon that you've got here because that is a, a function of Teams and allows you to manage shift patterns. So if you run shifts and you're wondering how to do it, then you have a function within Teams to allow you to do that. So coming back to Teams, if we have a look at the Teams window, um, you can see down here that we have our Teams. It's very similar to the chat window, um, but within the chat window, we actually see people in the, in the left-hand column. Um, so you're actually talking to people there one-to-one, -one, whereas in Teams, you're having a conversation with the whole team. Um, you can set up your own team within, uh, within Teams, and that is by design because Microsoft didn't want it to go through um, through IT all the time, um, and it's very similar to WhatsApp. So you can decide who you want to have in your team. Um, you need to give some thought when you're implementing Teams, because if you're not careful, you can get sprawl, and you might even find that you have two or three teams with exactly the same people in them, um, because one person set up one team, one other person set up something else. So it does need a little bit of thinking out rather than having a free-for-all. Um, once you set up your team, then you build, you you break that down into channels and channels can be uh, a particular topic or a project um, we actually use one for customers so uh, we have a team which everybody in the company is part of and uh, we have a channel per customer so if we want to have a conversation regarding the customer then it happens within that uh, within that channel so we all know where to go and anybody can go in there at any point and see what's been going on and what's been being said um, You'll see a number of them. Um, if any of them have a message that you haven't seen, then the, the channel itself will actually go bold. So there's, you know there are things in there that you haven't seen. Um, you always have a general channel and it can't be deleted. That's there by default by Microsoft and it will always be there. Uh, and we tend to use it for, again, non-structured conversations within the team, um, but they don't relate to anything, anything specific. So um, at the moment during lockdown, that's been used to say hello and goodbye and it's become sort of quite inventive using GIFs which we'll cover shortly. Um, so now looking down the bottom of the screen you've got another menu down there. Um, you've got the uh, font team where you can change the fonts um, and I, to be honest I've never ever done that. I don't think I might have made some bold but that's as far as it's got. Um, you then have the attach file icon that you can use um, and then you can choose one from your PC or from OneDrive or your recent files. Um, and when you put it in there, it will actually put it into the team itself as this one has done. 
but it will also store it in the file. So you have one place to go um, to find all of your files. So not only do you know where the conversations are, you know where the files are as well. So everything is in one place. Um, one of the good things about Teams uh, is um, you actually get, uh, you get notifications option um, and you can turn those off. So one of the, the things about email is that when an email comes in, it pings and it can be very disruptive because you don't know what it is. So you need to go and look. And a lot of the time it's something that wasn't that important. Well, within Teams or within a channel within Teams, you can actually say, I do not want to be notified when this has happened. Um, and in that case, it won't ping, it won't do anything. Uh, it'll just wait for you to go and look. If somebody wants to get your attention and you've got notifica notifications turned off, then they can use the at mention. And the at mention, they just put an at in front of your name and put that in. And then even if you've got notifications turned off, the at mention will come and tell you that somebody's um, set you a task that you need to look at. Um, going back down to the, the menu, um, you've got this icon here, which is meet now. So if you've got, uh, you, you've been having a conversation and it's been getting sort of slightly complicated and you're getting a bit fed up with typing, then you can schedule a team meeting now and it will start off either an audio or video call uh, and then you, you can carry on using the video and get through quite a lot very quickly. So it's a good way of keeping in touch and collaborating. Uh, without having to spend hours and hours typing. Uh, <clears throat> so um, one of the other things that you can do is you can actually add further apps in. So these are some of the ones, Power BI is a very powerful reporting tool from Microsoft. So you can add extra apps into your team. So you don't have to come out of Teams when you, you want to, when you want to do something else, you can work within Teams and we'll have a bit more of a look at that later. So I did mention earlier that what you can do, you can actually get things to happen within Teams when you're not working in it. So what I've done here very quickly um, is just set up a simple flow uh, in what Microsoft now called Power Automate. So I've kept this one, which is button post the message. Um, so if I click run, what it will do is it will give me a box over in the right hand side, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and it's designed to say I am at an event and tell people that, that where I am. So I am at the uh, Isbar Virtual Summit uh, and it's today's date and hopefully it, 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 so it's going well. So if I run that, um, that's done. So I'm not in Teams at this point. Um, but if I now go back to my uh, Teams message and go to auto update, you can see down the bottom here that it's told my team that I am at the virtual summit and it's going well. So um, I'm outside of Teams, but I'm communicating people within Teams and that can be used for anything. So if you use something like SharePoint, which is part of Office 365, every time you create a new document, it could go to the team and say, hi, I've just created a new document. Can you review it for me? Um, you can use it for um, auto approval. So you do something and it says, I need you to approve this. So it's, it's a very powerful tool and using Office 365 together, then you can start working with Devita much more effectively. And that can replace things like the, um, how do I get this check when I'm in here? And instead of shouting across the desk, um, you actually use tools within Office 365 to do it. Um, the other thing that I mentioned is that within, um, within Teams, you can actually add things to the menu. So here, um, if, I, if I show you this, which is our auto update one, we've only got post files and wikis, but if I go to asset purchases, then um, we have a fixed assets list, which again uses Office 365 um, and says, right, this will control all of our fixed assets. And that's done within Office 365. So very powerful tool, awful lot you can do with um, Teams far more than just video conferencing and audio conferencing um, because it is a complete collaboration package. If you want to know any more, then please contact us at React Computer Partnership and we'd be happy to discuss it with you. We can do a more in-depth interview, uh, a more in-depth demonstration for you. And we can also um, do, do onboard training for teams uh, if you are looking to implement it. So that's me finished for today. Please feel free to contact me if, uh, if you need any more help. Thank you, bye.